and I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. I have a great high priest at the very throne of God. In the person of Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. And everything that you and I receive today must come through Jesus. Adore him, softly begin to choir all of you. to be so careful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for everything that the Holy Spirit does in this place of worship today. That's one thing you'll not share with any human being. You'll not share the glory. You'll not share the praise. And before the visible and the invisible, we bow to give you the glory for the marvelous manifestation, the supernatural manifestation of our God. Not one person, I pray, shall leave this place of worship this Saturday afternoon. The same person they were when they entered. It's a simple prayer. But granted, I pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Oh, thank you. And you know, I wouldn't be here without Jimmy, our own Jimmy McDonald, who's been with us for years, who has thrilled literally thousands with the singing of the gospel. And here he is, Jimmy McDonald. Come on, Jimmy. While Jimmy was singing, I looked down, and my word, I see down here on the front row some of the most distinguished men in the medical profession. What are you doing here? <laughs> I see a very marvelous, distinguished lady in the medical profession. I think that's marvelous.
I'm glad you're sitting on the front seat so you won't miss anything. I see down there a man who's on the staff of John Hopkins Hospital. I see a couple of you medical men down there. I know ya. I see a couple of you who first came to the services as skeptics. Dr. Kastorf, you were one of the greatest skeptics it, it, I have ever had. There were times I could have killed you. <laughs> and I think, Dr. Friedman, you came as great a skeptic because of your training in, in England, and you had not been trained, you know, d to believe these miracles. But had you ever thought, really, that all healing is of God? Really, when it comes right down to it. You great surgeons can perform surgery, but remember something, the greatest surgeon in the world has to wait until uh, after he performs his surgery. He has to wait, wait for a supernatural power to do the healing. And it's just like that, you know. I'm going to speak to you for very, a very short time, not more than 10 minutes. But I'm going to talk to you about something that's vitally important. This is not a sermon. I'm just talking to you because I feel that I owe it to you. I don't care where you go these days, everybody's talking about the uncertainty of the future. And I feel that I owe it to you to talk about what the Bible says regarding the future. There's an, an uncertainty in the very atmosphere. Everybody knows it. Everybody is discussing it. What's happening? There isn't a strong personality on the scene. Nations are crumbling. I don't have to prove it. You know it as you watch your telecast. You know it as you read your newspapers. Nations are cr crumbling so quickly. Something is happening. That's the reason the very atmosphere is filled with uncertainty. What's happening? What's happening? That's the reason I'm taking this time today, this Saturday afternoon, to, to just tell you what the Word of God says. There's no great ruler, no great power, on the scene today. Men today are literally like men on a chessboard. Nations literally are as men on a chessboard and world affairs are shaping up exactly like God's Word said they would. God's Word is infallible. Know that. I don't care what your preconceived idea may have been regarding the Bible. It's more up to date than tomorrow morning's newspaper. God made a promise to Abraham. God made a covenant to Abraham and Abraham's seed. And when God makes a promise, when God gives a covenant, he'll keep it. I don't care whether it's to a nation or to an individual, and you can stick your very life on it. And God made certain promises and covenants to Abraham and the seed of Abraham. For 39 centuries, the seed of Abraham have, has been a scattered people, hated, a people with a, of the country. Murdered, spat upon. Around the world, they've been scattered to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. Name it. Unwanted. Without a homeland. And yet God made a covenant with the seed of Abraham. Thirty-nine centuries have come and thirty-nine centuries have gone. And it seemed like the most unlikely thing in the world that there'd ever be a nation, Israel. 
And that the seed of Israel, seed of Abraham, would be gathered together again. And I want to go on record this, this Saturday afternoon in Las Vegas, giving you the word of God, and you can stake your very life on it, regardless of how it looks in the Middle East. And remember, war is inevitable. Sometimes I think we like to be like the ostrich. We like to bury our faces in the sand and we won't face reality. And we say with optimism, tomorrow it's going to be better. Tomorrow it's going to be to better. And I'm the greatest optimist in the world. But when it comes to the word of God, we have to face facts. Remember, we've got to face facts. War is inedib inevitable. There will be war in the Middle East. But I want you to know something. The Bible says this absolute authority, that which is infallible, the Bible says, for God gave it to Moses in that burning bush. Israel will be absolutely indestructible. And that's the word of God. The hour is coming when Russia and her allies are going down after that oil and the potential wealth in the Dead Sea. How do I know? If you want to know how nations are going to line up and stack up, read it. They're called by name in the 38th chapter of Ezekiel. And that, my friend, is not supposition. That is his word, and it's infallible. Believe me. And these things are going to happen. And they're happening so quickly, so rapidly. The Word of God says God has hooks in the jaws of the nation. Literally hooks in the jaws of the nation. And when Russia and her allies Go down after a spoil. The Bible refers to it as a spoil. Goes down after Israel. God himself in mercy will reach down with a gray sickle of size in his hand. And will blow the enemies down as a scythe in the field. And Israel will be seven months bearing the dead. My friend, this whole world is going to see a miracle. A miracle of a nation. In the hands of a merciful God. A God who, whose word is infallible. And in that hour, a miracle will be performed much as the world has never known and will never know again. It's the thrill of it all. I cannot begin to tell you. And in that hour, not just a score of Jews, not just a few hundred of the seed of Abraham, but the word of God says the whole house the whole house of Israel, the whole house of Israel, will acknowledge the Son of the living God as the true Messiah. It will be one of the greatest in gaps in the kingdom of God that the world has ever known. And the world will crown him the king of kings and Lord. King. That is the word of God. On the other side of the coin, and remember something, the world. 
such as the world has never known. I would like to stand before you this Saturday afternoon and tell you, whatever you want to call it, a recession. Call it whatever you want to. But, beloved, the future is dark. And it's getting darker. And it's getting darker. And the thing that we need most in our nation is not something that can be legislated. I don't care who our president would be. I don't care who the members of Congress might be. We put the blame on so many, we'd like to. What the world needs is something the Democrats can't give us and something the Republicans can't give us. It's something that the billions and billions of dollars cannot buy. What our nation needs more than anything else in this hour is a fresh baptism of the love of God. <laughs> you know that. What? Something but just a split second now. You want to know the why of these miracles? You want to know the why of it? It's not Catherine Kuhlman, it's not some personality. I'm giving you the picture, the world the picture. But remember something. There is the spiritual side. And the word of God says when ye see these things begin to come to pass, the things that I've been talking about. When you see the world situation as we're seeing it today, he's saying to his own, he's saying to the church, Look up and rejoice, for your redemption draweth nigh. It's marvelous. And you want to know about these miracles? Not Catherine Kuhlman. I still contend that as surely as in the early church, they had miracle services. When every person present was healed, and they had miracle services like that. So surely before the great catching up, so surely before the church is caught up, there will be a miracle service or services when literally every person in that place will be healed by the power of God. And I believe that with every atom of my And that's exactly what's happening. These great crowds come not because of Catherine and Kuhlman. I wouldn't walk across the street to see her. I've news for you, she's the most ordinary person you've ever seen in your life. I want you to know that. And the only reason that I'm standing before you, and the only reason that God is using the one that you're seeing the way that he is using her, Because I was born without talent. I've always had an inferiority complex about my looks. Born with that just fuzz on my head. I was the kind of baby that They'd say to Mrs. Kuhlman, what a healthy child. <laughs> Freckled. I bought so much Stillman Freckle Cream when I was a kid in Concordia that the first layer of flesh peeled off of my face. Stillman's freckle cream. I've always had a complex about my looks. I was born without talent. And one day I just looked up and said, wonderful Jesus, I don't have a thing. Not a thing. But if you can take nothing and use it, I offer you that nothing. 
ay nawala. All I can give you is my love. I'll give you every ounce of strength in my body. That's all I have to give you. To this very hour, I have never forgotten for whence I've come. There isn't a day of my life that I don't pray that same prayer and mean it with all of my heart. All I have is my love. If you can use it, take it. I die a thousand deaths. All you see is the white dress. All you see is this. Don't another person try to describe it. Don't. Then I know that's all you've seen. I die a thousand deaths before I walk out on a platform. I don't care where it is. I don't care how small or how large the auditorium or how the size of the crowd. I die a thousand deaths. I a thousand deaths because I know better than anyone else in the whole world that I cannot give it to you, that I have no healing virtue, I have no healing power. You and I are dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember this moment, God in position. The great creator, I'd like to think of him as being the big boss, up his right hand in position of great high priest, the very son of the living God. And everything that you and I receive must come through Jesus. But in this place of worship is the Holy Spirit, the one through whom Jesus offered himself before he ever came to earth in the form of flesh. The Holy Ghost, the mighty third person, is here. And as he moves upon this audience, it's a moment like this that I feel like being seated because you don't need me. You may have never been in a service like this in your life before. I do not lay hands on you and pray on you. You come after you have been healed and you slip up. The steps over here or the steps over here. Eyes closed for just a minute. Every eye closed in this great place of worship today. Move upon this people. And we bow before the Father and we bow before the Son. And we bow in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Do be careful to give you the glory we bow. Move upon this people. Forget about Captain Kuhn, forget about anyone else in this place today. Just close your eyes for just a moment. Emphysema, in the name of Jesus, while I was speaking, somebody received the healing for emphysema. Just breathe very deeply. You'll find that you're breathing perfectly. There's not a trace of emphysema there. Just breathe very deeply as the power of the Holy Ghost has gone through that body of yours. It happened while I was speaking. There's another cancer healing someplace and every bit of pain has left that body. It happened while I was speaking. Every bit of pain has left that body. And as someone who's in great pain, you're becoming very conscious of the fact that, that the pain has left that body. In just a split second, just a moment ago, I don't know where you are in the auditorium, but somebody's ear opened. I could have stopped. I would have grieved the Holy Spirit had I stopped then. Hold that ear to close. Somebody has gotten the opening for an ear. That's all that I know. Something, I don't know what it is, but something is happening in the wheelchair section. That's the only thing that I know. Something is happening back there. It's all over this place. 
just softly choir, Alleluia. Softly. As the power of God goes through this body. What is this, Jesus? The power of God's on it. Stop down in the foot. Stop down. Is there no pain there at all? No. You mean none? Walk across there. Just walk across there. Give her a great big God. Is there no pain, honey? Stop down again. Just stop down again as hard as you can. Where are you from? Tucson, Arizona. From Tucson. Dear Jesus, right now the power of the Holy Ghost has just gone through this body. We give you the praise. Down again. And the power of God goes through this. That's power. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't understand it. I only know that I have nothing to do with it. Is this hurt? Is this hurts? Were you expecting this today? Yes. <laughs> yes. I see. You stop down again. I had my hand on the television. Is, is this yours? Well, go on. Go on. Hook on to it and go on down. It's your eyes. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. There she goes. Go on. What is this over here? Jimmy, what is this? What is this? Don't cry on it. Tell the big mother. Don't cry, honey. Because I'm not a woman. Don't really want to be She said, I'm crying because I'm not a believer. I want to believe. I want to believe, but she says, I'm not a believer. Beloved, we've come to the hour when it's not only faith, it's the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you stick to the best Move your shoulders, good night. Well, I can't move her. Just, just, uh, is there no pain there? There is no pain there. Put your arms up right now. Put your arms up as high as you can. Swing your arms. Swing them. Is there no pain there? There isn't. Where are you from? I live here in Vegas. Right here in Vegas? I Where do you go to church? I'm in Jewish faith. I go to the I knew I'd wind up in the synagogue. <laughs> I think the pain goes away. I can't ask for any more than Dear Jesus, just thanks. And the power of the Holy Ghost goes through this body. We vow to give you the praise. We vow to give you the glory, wonderful Jesus. Just do everything that you could not have done without pain. Just do it. <laughs> oh God, come here. I'm so glad for you. I'm so glad for you. <laughs> this is the mercy. Look, whose wheelchair is this? Which one? Come here. Come here. Walk across there. Run. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come. Oh, look. Give them a great big God. You mean it's hard for you to believe? <laughs> Go on. You, 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 you tell the people what? I don't believe it. He said, he said I don't believe it. She, she could hardly walk. Her pain in her shoulder and her chest. She he, had open heart surgery, you know. You mean you can't? It's hard for you to believe. Uh -huh. Are you from? Where are you from? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. We're local. He said we're local. Where do you go to church? Trinity. God can. love you. You just haven't been able to go. I wrote to you a couple of weeks ago when you answered. Go on. Run across there again and show your husband.
you thank me, I didn't have a thing in the world to do with it. You look so funny holding your wife's purse. <laughs> just give this dear husband a double dose. Just, just give it to him. Just give it to him. The power of God goes through this body. Give him a double dose. He has a spine injury, too. And dear Jesus, heal his spine. Just heal his spine. Just throw it in for good measure. Bend over. Just, just bend over. Is there any pain there at all? Look at that, Mama. He said, look at that, Mama. <laughs> Mama, look at it. It's a bad heart diabetic. Bend over again. You hold the purse now. You're more able to hold it. Go on. Hold it now. Look at that, Mama. Tell the people what. I couldn't do that before. I couldn't get down to here. Now go all the way down now. Go all the way down. Give him a great big applause. <laughs> Honey, walk down those steps. I want you to see you walk down those steps. Go on. Go on. Walk down those steps right now. Go on. Look. There she goes. What you think about that? Are you sure she'll be all right? He said, are you sure she'll be all right? <laughs> Can't you see why God repented he ever made man? <laughs> sure she'll be all right. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Give them a great big applause. <laughs> Dean, come on. Good, 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 come here. Tell what she happened. came in this wheelchair, partially blind, unable to walk, unable to move. The doctor was just questioning her. Have him come over I here. I had doctor. multiple sclerosis. You had what? Multiple sclerosis. Well, you stand there, though. You're scared stiff. Well, I am too excited. Did you expect to be walking today? No, I didn't expect to walk today. Not like this. Well, go, go on. Walk across there. Go on. Pick him up high. Pick him up high. Pick him up high. Who's with you, honey? A member of your family? Yeah, no, uh, she came from Toronto. And she well, where are you there. from? Uh, I'm from Mountain Springs, but I'm from Las Vegas originally. Mountain Springs? Is, is this her? Yes. G come I here, doctor. Uh, come here, John Hopkins. I knew yeah. I'd need you. Yeah. My doctor well, just well, ordered me another new chair. And it your came. doctor? You mean the this doctor? Oh, no, not that one. I've got a chair. You push buttons and you go to town. You whirl around the house. And your doctor has just ordered you a new one? Yes. Take it back and get a refund. I guess I'll have to. Ms. Kuhlman, this is wonderful. I was talking with her a moment ago, and she tells me that since 1969, she's had multiple sclerosis. And when she came in today in the wheelchair, she was unable to walk. She had pain in her head. She had double vision and couldn't see straight. She had lost a sensation, and every bit of this has completely disappeared. She was so ecstatic when she found she could lift up her knees. I thought she was going to jump right off of the stage. It's the first time I lift up my knees. It's really years. marvelous. The first time you've lifted your knees up for In years. Five years. Five yeah. years. Five years. Come on, any of your doctors, come on up here. Get busy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The first time in five years. Yes, I can lift my knees like this. Now remember something. That mm. she, she's using. I think that's a very often. She's using muscles, yes. ligaments that she has not used for five years. Go on, go on, go on down the steps. Go on, honey. She says, "I sure will." Give her a week to exercise her legs. Give her a week to exercise those legs. Down she goes. And where's her wheelchair? You're taking it down. Go on. Th th there they go. There they go. There they go. Okay, honey, here's your wheelchair. You. -hoo. Here's your wheelchair. Push it on down. She said, I don't want it. Well, I'll go, go on down. And, and, and get. Uh, that's right. There she goes. Give her a great big applause. Doctor, what is this? This little 11-year-old boy had rheumatoid arthritis affecting his hips and his knees and his uh, ankles, wrists, 
And this is his wheelchair. You mean this is a little boy's wheelchair? Yes. Honey, is this... This is the most beautiful child. I would have come to Las Vegas just for the healing of this youngster. How old are you, honey? Eleven. Tell the people how old you are. Eleven. What's your name? Yeah. I want you to see this little wheelchair. Look, this little wheelchair for, made for a little 11-year-old boy, rheumatoid arthritis. This is grandmother, the grandmother who brought him, remember. Walk across the stage, honey. Walk across there. If you want to see a beautiful face, if you want to see a beautiful, look the smile on this face. Here's his wheelchair. How many feel like it's all worthwhile? Put up a hand. Look at his wheelchair. Look the smile on this face. You can't doubt the smile. You can't doubt the smile. And Grandma brought him. Where do you live? Here in Vegas. Where, where, where do you people go to church? Uh, First Baptist. First Baptist Church. Pick him up real high. Walk again. Pick him up real high. Feel higher. Feel higher. Look, look, look. Look, all you have to do is to exercise him. That's all on earth that you have. Look, look at that face. Does nothing hurt? Doesn't it hurt? You mean it doesn't hurt? Okay, take your wheelchair. You push it, honey. Go on. There he goes. There he goes. Don't thank me. I didn't do a thing. There he goes. Give him a great day, God bless you. We bow to give you the praise. We bow to give you the glory. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit. Go down the aisle, honey. I want to go down this main aisle. Turn around. Turn around. Push your old wheelchair, honey. This is holy ground. Oh, God love you. I want to see you riding your bike tomorrow. Tomorrow he'll be riding his bicycle. We'll put the old wheelchair away and be riding his bicycle tomorrow. What is this, Jean? Oh, terrible pain. Pain is left her entire. Cancer of both hips of the bone. And that's her wheelchair. Is there no pain there at all? Dear Jesus, I worship you. As the power of the Holy Ghost has gone through this body, as the power of God has gone through this body. That's power. As the fire of the Holy Ghost. These people, for those who are new here, they are not fainting. This is the power of God. <laughs> understand it? I don't understand it. Sometimes I think these old physical bodies of ours are just not geared for this much power. This is power, believe me. Did you expect to be out of that wheelchair in this place today? No, I said you'd be in there for a long time. <laughs> no, she said I expected to be in that wheelchair for a long time. So in that wheelchair section, you didn't expect? No. Oh, honey, that's all right. A wig or two doesn't make any difference. <laughs> Think nothing of it. Think nothing of it. Stomp down on your legs. Just stomp down. Harder. Is there no pain? Steal harder, honey. They won't drop off harder yet. Is there no pain? Cancer of both hips. Yes, yeah, squat down. Do that. Do everything you could not have done before. Everything. And is there still no pain? None. Squat down again. Put it to the test, then go back to your doctor and have the whole thing. Are you amazed that you're without pain? Yes, Walk across there. Go on. 
She said, I expect to be in that wheelchair a long time. Good, good, come here. <laughs> I can't talk about it. Paralyzed, Stop. came from Denver, totally paralyzed on this side, no feeling, and her son's with her. She just yes. got out of the hospital. Uh -huh. and, and, and you, did you fly in from Denver? Yes. Uh, tell the people what. We just flew in uh, yesterday mo morning, uh, and uh, <laughs> my mother had a stroke in June of 72, and I've got to tell you something, this is a confirmation, because... I'm a flight attendant for United Airlines, and I graduated, I went to New York, and I called home and talked to my father, and he, and he said that she had a complete stroke, and they didn't know whether she was going to live or die. And my first OJT flight was to Las Vegas the next day. The next day, it was to Las Vegas. And I said, oh, Lord, and I was a brand new, I wasn't even a Christian. <laughs> and I just prayed that the Lord would heal her. And I, when we believed it, and we felt led to come, and... And my mother's had paralysis on her right side. She just got out of Swedish hospital in Denver and had over $3,000 worth of medical tests run on her a week and a half ago. <laughs> and the doctor said she'd be on medication the rest of her life. Did, and she's healed. Did, did you bleed? Oh, Put your arm up. Put, put, put your arm up. Swing your arm. Oh, praise the Lord. Swing it. Swing it. Pick up your legs. Pick up your legs. Pick up your legs. You can't open your hands. She could never squeeze me this hard before in her, in her right hand. Are you, are you sure this is your mother? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you expect all this to happen? No, well, I kept, I didn't know if I had to. That's power. That's power. That, my friend, is the power of God. That's proof for the old skeptic that I didn't push her down. This is the power of God in this place. Oh, honey, don't forget. Yeah, you forget about the wig. Nobody cares. <laughs> a little thing like a wig. Who cares? Honey, you get, get, oh, no, look at this. That, this is thrilling. That's all right, honey. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's all right. In a few minutes, I'll take it off and try it on myself and see how I look at it. Think nothing of it. Put both arms right straight up. Swing your arms. Can you tell any difference in one than the other? None. Pick up your legs right now. Pick up your legs. Where can this be verified? What hospital? From Swedish Queen Hospital, Dr. Bl Dr. Bloomquist. And when you came to the, you were paralyzed on which side? On the right, on the right side. side. My face was numb as could be. Do you feel me now? Yes. Yes. She also had a bladder infection. Any yes. doctor? Uh, what surgery. happened? I had surgery. Well, 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 where are my doctors? Come on. Uh, th th this face. See if there's any paralysis of the face left there. Your doctor Close your eyes be... tightly. Tightly. Don't let me open. Now look up at the We're having light. a little clinic. Okay, now clench your teeth. Now, can you whistle? Okay, good. Now, put your tongue out. All right. Fine. All right. What do you find, doctor? I don't find any evidence of any paralysis. Give her a great big up. both of his ears open today. You are you a, a doctor? Who are you? You're a scientist. I don't want you to forget who I am. Because I know things. He said, I want you to forget who I am. But this is a scientist. And it's true. The two hardest people in the world to convince. A doctor and a scientist. What happened to you today? We'll forget. Well, you, you, you made a statement to the audience. Just now somebody heard for the first yes. time. I had damage to both ears and had gone to an ear specialist and had earphones put on and he turned the frequency up and he said, it's no use you getting a hearing aid because both nerves are dead. Both nerves are both dead? Both nerves. 
So and then, you then your you attendant down there started to giving me a test. And pretty soon I told him, I said, she's talking louder than you are. Do you hear me perfectly now? Oh, I hear you do. You hear me now? I hear you. You hear me now? I do. You hear me now? I hear you now. Do you hear me now? I hear you now. Do you still hear me? I still hear you. And the nerves are dead in both ears, and they wouldn't even fit you with a hearing aid. No, sir. Did you believe when you came in here today? No. Did you not believe when you came in here today? That's right. What's right? You didn't believe? I didn't believe anything could help me. <laughs> Why did you come? I lost faith in everything. Why did you come? Well, sort of. Out of curiosity? Curiosity. Do you want to know what God is really like? Do you want to know this is what God is really like? This is his mercy. Do you believe now? I sure do. <laughs> Give him a great big God bless you. There goes a scientist who came in and didn't believe a thing. Tell me, is this impossible for her to walk? Is this impossible? Yeah, the doctor said I took my whole knee out January 6th. D doctor, no tell knee about this. Knee you, you've been interviewing her. She, she had very severe pain in her knee. She had very radical surgery on her knee. She can't bend it, but she had very severe pain after the surgery, and the doctor told her it would be months before she'd ever and get out of the wheelchair. Been removed? It was the knee. They removed the entire knee. The entire knee has yes. been removed. Yes, I, I, I had a... Uh, Which close, knee? My right knee. I can't bend it, but it, it, it doesn't hurt. And I couldn't walk before I came today without my crutches. And, and this is what you were wearing? Yes. To be able to walk? I attached it into my shoe, and it came full length up into my, my hip. Attached to your shoe, and, yes. and all the way up? I have a metal piece down in my shoe that it clicked into. Walk across there now. Walk across there now. And you mean that was impossible? The whole kneecap has been removed. Give her a great vote. Both kneecaps have been removed. And I have an artificial one still in the left knee, but it works. Did you expect to be walking today? Well, I was. I was hoping and praying I would, but I just kept praying I it would. It seems so impossible. Yes, and I... Dear Jesus, from this moment on, as the power of God goes through this body, as the power of the Holy Ghost just goes through this body, we vow to give you the praise. We vow to give you the glory forever and ever. We give you the praise. Do you know how impossible it is for this woman? It's impossible for her to walk. Oh. Is this all new to you? You've never been in anything like this before. I've been, I've been and she's scared to death. Go on, go on, go on. Keep on, get, 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 keep right on. It's impossible. It's impossible for her to be walking without all this paraphernalia. Give her a great thing. This is oxygen. This man has a hole in his heart. Did you ever go to a church service where they had an oxygen tent? What, what do you call it? An oxygen what? What, doctor? A what? An oxygen tent. He cannot, he cannot live without it. He even has it while he sleeps. And the man himself can't believe it. Not yet. He said, not yet. Walk across there. Go on. Walk across there. Just walk across there. Go on. Go on. Come on. <laughs> you won't fall apart. Go on. Keep on walking. Go on. Keep on walking. How many have to admit this is God? Put up a hand. Come on. How do you feel? Good. Is it hard for you to believe? You bet. Where are you from? Here in uh, Vegas. 
Oh, you said Indian Springs. Indian Springs? Yeah. Do you go to any church? Uh, no, I'm not here lately. Uh, yeah. Here, yeah, Indian Springs. Indian Springs. Where? LDS, LDS Church. LDS Church. Indian Springs. LDS. Mormon. Mormon. Yeah. You're a Mormon? Yeah. Oh, he says, I sure thank you. Well, honey, I didn't have a thing to do with it. Well, yeah, I heard you all day, but I think... <laughs> <laughs>